I would like to read this to you. We're talking about crop losses happening all over the world. And we were just on this topic about food shortages because a lot of conspiracy theories say that they're going to have to enact global controls uh, if the food starts drying up or going away. And the only, only thing that could do that would be climate change. And we call it solar system heating or solar system change. It's not pretty what's happening. And some of the information I'm going to talk about might freak you out. A global food crisis appears to be inevitable. You know, even during good years, we have some really difficult times feeding everyone on the planet. And everybody knows some kind of major climate shift appears to be happening. Everybody will agree that there's more extremes. But that's about where the common ground ends. It even says that in this article, our sun has become exceedingly quiet. Although it's exceedingly hot and to stand under. And many experts believe that this is a sign that a solar minimum is now upon us. Okay, so what? A solar minimum is now, it's been upon us since 2016. So what's the big deal? Of course, they say, we have seen solar minimums happen quite regularly in the past. Yeah, every, two, every 11, 10, 11 years. And if this just a normal solar minimum, then conditions should begin to return to normal after a couple of years. What do you mean normal? What are you returning to normal by getting the sun hotter? Unfortunately, evidence continues to mount that we have entered what is known as a grand solar minimum. So what, I say? In fact, Professor this and Professor that, we are facing, they're quoting experts now, as a super grand solar minimum. Not a, not a grand solar minimum, but a super grand solar minimum. But we're already seeing weather chaos, climate chaos, like we have never seen before. That's already happening. We're having record precipitation, record wind speeds, record hot cold extremes, record warm oceans, record precipitation, record heat related injuries, record heat deaths, record crop failures, record droughts, record land surface temperatures. Yeah, okay. Climate chaos is upon us. Jeez. Ice Age Farmer has compiled a grand solar minimum crop loss map. A map that the Ice Age is good. We're already having crop losses, right? But now this is the grand solar minimum crop loss map. Oh my goodness. How can we even read this one? Ice Age Farmer's Map shows that there are literally dozens of locations all over the globe right now that are reporting significant crop losses, and this is really unlike anything we have ever seen before. So they say a true statement, crop loss losses like we've never seen before. But it can't be the white hot sun out there, and it can't be the record high cosmic rays that are public record now, and it can't be the solar irradiance where we have a UV index of 15 or 16. No, we're going to leave all that out and talk about what? We're going to talk about something that happened in the 1600s, okay? Okay. It's true. Some areas are too cold. Some areas are too hot. And we've told you why. We've showed you why over and over and over again. It's due to the Arctic vortex. Everywhere we look, they say, we see extremes. Thank you. And the behavior of our sun is the primary reason that it is happening. According to, according to who? 
Yes, I agree. The behavior of our son is the primary reason it's happening. But it has to do with the solar corona and putting out more energy than you could ever imagine. Last November, I warned, this person said, that we could be facing one of the coldest winters in modern times. And that is precisely what happened. Oh my goodness, that's a that's a stretch. Back then, top scientists were warning us that the Grand Solar Minimum had arrived. There it is again. And yet, yet, 100,000 people died of heat-related injuries just the last 10 years. But yet, the Grand Solar Minimum has arrived. We have epic wildfires like never before, but yet the Grand Solar Minimum has arrived. We have record low ice pack, both in the north and, news for you, in the south now. And guess what? It's a Grand Solar Minimum has arrived. We have record warm oceans, record warm, not record cold, but record warm. And what they say, they're warning, they're warning us. The grand solar minimum has arrived. And the behavior of the sun has continued to confirm that hypothesis. What hypothesis? That we're not heating? What, what hypothesis? That the oceans aren't at record warm temperatures? What hypothesis? That the ice isn't really melting? What hypothesis? That evaporation is incredible and creating droughts Followed by extreme flooding? What what hypothesis are you talking about? See? So we'll talk about the surface of the sun. With Na NASA images have revealed that the face of our star is looking ominously quiet right now. Calm. Okay. Now here's here here comes an oxymoron. Listen to this. The surface of the sun is normally a rolling, superheated hellscape, but it's not. It's ominously quiet, prompting claims of the grand solar minimum. But listen here, this is what they write, I'm quoting now, quote, During the minimum, there are significantly lower sunspots, and its magnetic field weakens, allowing cosmic rays from outside our solar system to rain down on Earth. So we have cosmic rays from outside the solar system raining down on Earth and that's going to put us into a winter. Cos Since when do cosmic rays raining on Earth in record numbers since when does that cool us down? And guess what? If we have record number of rays coming into the solar system then there's a record number of rays passing through the corona as well and what happens to those rays when they pass through the coronas they ionize they collide they change direction and they create a ton of energy which is why the white hot sun you will not talk about well, the last time, they say, the last time the solar minimum was in effect was the Maunder minimum, which saw seven decades of freezing weather. But, wait a minute. They still, oh my goodness. Freezing weather where? We had very long, harsh winters. You bet we did. And we also had incredible volcanism during that time, too. No, but we'll just leave all that off the table and just talk about the ominous quiet sun. During the period, temperatures dropped globally by 1.3 degrees Celsius, leading to a to shorter season and ultimately food shortages. It's funny because we fought, we fought several wars during that time. We navigated the oceans just fine. Uh, so that didn't collapse. I don't, I don't remember reading about that in history where all of our agriculture collapsed during you know, a mini ice age. We never learned about that. And some scientists even disagree and contradict and say that whatever ice age they're talking about it wasn't happening between 1615 and 1715. I'll mind you, Mount, Mount Pinatubo dropped our temperatures by two degrees. Okay. 
So where was where was the ice age from that? Not even a short-lived one. So well, here we are. We're talking about horrible things. We're talking about the global food supply. We're talking about people starving. We're talking about uh, food becoming unaffordable. We're talking about a continuing shrinking of our food supply. And guess what? They're going to tell you it's due to an ice age when our oceans are setting at record warm temperatures. Uh, I would I would just never go back and read another article posted by this place that I'm reading from. So it's been, they're reporting that older Americans are already suffering from hunger and malnourishment. Hey, that could explain why we had such a bad flu season. 20, the 2017 story over at Feeding America reporting that more than 41 million Americans were suffering from hunger daily, including more than 13 million children. And this National Geographic story reporting that one out of every six Americans aren't getting enough to eat. So, yeah, you know, if the global food production drops 10, 20 percent or even more, what can you expect to happen? And we have never had to deal with anything like this in modern times. We are in unprecedented territory. And meanwhile, the population of the planet has grown from 1.6 billion in the 1900 to 7.5 billion today. That's a lot of procreation. I thought bunny rabbits were bad. And an expert says we have entered the time of the perfect storm. I mean, whatever that means. And we are going to start to witness things happening that may, that many people would consider to be unimaginable. Yeah, the fire in Australia is unimaginable. The, the rest of the world isn't just fainting out of their chairs right now. Then you're right. They, it's beyond their imagination. Food supply is going to getting tighter and tighter. It's going to get tighter and tighter. Um, it, you know, there's no disagreement on that. It's all related to the ice age that's coming, though. What, what a ridiculous article, huh? But let me illustrate how forceful the fraudulent push is on trying to conceal what's happening to our planet and our solar system. You could already saw, I read to you an article about all these crop losses. When you went back and you looked at those little red dots that were all over the map, 80% of those crop losses were due to drought or flooding. Period. 80%. So when you have an article about crop loss and they're talking about Ice Age, something is truly and definitely a miss and it's just so blatant anymore when you get the hard data and you understand what, what's going on in the solar system every time you read an article like this it, it, it just it looks so pathetic any longer the one of the I, I think it's Electroverse has a big article about the Dakotas about the loss due to a freeze a freeze and you go through and you see cherry picked freezes that happen because of you know the the vortex is bringing air further south than ever but are also taking warm air for further north than ever and of course they can't talk about the whole cycle they can only talk about how the cold air is coming down in these vortexes they won't even say the word vortex but They'll tell, they got pictures of the frozen crops and, and ice on crops and the grand solar minimum. The grand solar minimum is here. Look it. We just froze out 118,000 acres of red potatoes and some uh, another crop. So, meanwhile, in the same U.S. Department of Agriculture report, 
talking about the crop losses in, in fact, Dakotas, they talk about the grain loss due to flooding. And the grain loss due to flooding was over 1 million acres. So you have articles about crop losses. You have articles about hey, how you know things are going bad, but you're only going to show people and you're going to shove it in their face the crop loss related to freezing and hide, purposely hide, ignore, turn their back on and this kind of disguise the crop losses that have nothing to do with cold temperatures, period. It's the grand solar minimum. And 80% of those losses, according to the people who pay that those claims, were due to drought. Are you? Did you hear me? Drought. And since when does drought and heat not go hand in hand? 80%. So when somebody has a website dedicated to to the 10% crop loss that was due to a freeze and, and ignores the 80% crop losses brought on by increasing warm temperatures. What does that say? Being that heat is killing the planet, being that heat is killing wildlife, killing humans, creating plagues, come on. And they're going to sit there and talk about what the super grand. And it used to be the grand solar minimum, but now it's the super grand. It just keeps getting icier and icier. Problem is, is our ice packs over the last 20 years have suffered the greatest decline that we've ever seen in a 20 year interval. Ever. You want to call that going into an ice age or coming out of an ice age? So I prove to you that the disinformation is intentional. That you cannot ignore the majority in order to hype the minority. And the minority is crop losses due to freezing are outnumbered by other factors that cause crop losses. Ten to one. And that's coming from the horse's mouth.